If you ever got stuck while modeling in Blender, then this video is for you. I will guide you through a step-by-step -step process of the three stages of modeling from block out to secondary detail to tertiary detail. Let's go. Well, let's see how we can bring a model from stage one to stage three. So we're going to be going through different stages of detailing from block out to mid detail to tertiary detail. So you can easily understand how it works. I know that there's a lot of people struggling with this and, you know, coming up with ideas, but also coming up with details for the model. So, you know, we're going to talk about it in this video. Now, if you're a complete beginner, I suggest you look up our course, which is linked in the video description. It's called Jumpstart Hard Surface in Blender. It's specifically designed for beginners and it will teach you all the basics, foundations of hard surface in a matter of a few hours. Over 80,000 people enrolled and they love it. So, you know, go ahead and grab it. It's free and it will massively jumpstart your Blender knowledge. So let's start with a simple cube. Now, when, you, when you're designing something, you need to think what you want to do okay it's really important you can't just sit there and doodle so what i usually do i look at references i look at stuff you know think okay i want to for example create a box right like a sci-fi box so then i look at different references of boxes you know sci-fi design and i find something that kind of speaks to me okay something that i more or less want to create and i'm going to create like a spin-off of this all right so you know just adding my own twist to it right so let's just scale this on X here and make it a bit taller, something like this, maybe a bit fatter. There we go. And we're going to apply scale because um, this will um, interfere with, you know, if the scale isn't applied, it's going to interfere with bevels. We're going to bevel this one here, but I don't want it to be so steep. I want it to be a little bit less steep. So I'm going to go GX and kind of, you know, ease it off. I'm going to mirror this to the other side with mesh machine and I think we're good to go uh, now I'm going to grab these two and bevel them and you know create like a more or less smooth bevel here so um, we're happy and also what I want is I want kind of like a slight chamfer here in the bottom maybe a bit deeper you know kind of something like this uh, so this box is kind of like a stand stand here that sort of you know is narrower than the box itself and also I'm going to bevel this Mirror to the side, then we're good to go. And I'll apply a small bevel, make it really tiny. Now, bevel size is really important, okay? If you're creating something, you know, that is machined from like a thin um, steel or, um, you know, some aluminum, whatever, um, you don't want to go heavy on bevel like this, right? You want to make it look as if it was, um, you know, made of metal. Usually metal pieces like this have kind of a sharp, uh, sharp bevel, so that's how we should look like okay awesome so now on top of this here what we're gonna do is we're going to offset this edge here so i'm going to select that and i'm going to Control b this press p and change the profile of the bevel moving my mouse scroll down to three segments usually i use this method to secure bevels for sub d but this is actually really quite useful in this situation. Now, here we can see clearly that we have a bevel of a shooting on itself. So what we can do is use unfuck from Mesh Machine. Simply select uh, surrounding edges with control and just unfuck this. And I can copy this to all sides. And Bob Janko. Now, we're going to grab this one. And I want to separate it from this mesh. So Q um, and shift click on curve extract to curve extract it outside maybe a little bit more so go to modify solidify a bit more like that and let's just you know just make this bevel a bit smaller let's just apply scale here i'm not sure why it's behaving so strangely let me just uh remove this bevel and reapply new bevel there we go sometimes you know bugs happen uh, this one could be also kind of thin Maybe not as thin. Actually, this is fine. And let's mirror this to the other side like this. And we got some really cool shape already going on. Now, of course, the box needs some cut. So we're going to create some cut here. I'm going to go with the end gone cut with box cutter here. So I just create something uh, maybe like this. I might actually go quite high here like that or do something like this here. You know what I mean? Now, don't worry about being super precise because we're going to be mirroring to the other side. X and slash it. And then I'm going to mirror this to the other side from left to right on both 
um, elements and we're good to go and this peachy right here in the bottom um i also want some kind of uh, cut so maybe let's grab this one and we could actually press x here as well let's just shift click that because what i actually want here is create like a chamfer so maybe do something like this and we're going to move it up a little bit so we don't interfere with this bevel here all right so that looks really cool i think it's really nice uh here on the side we could have some cut for handle or something so we, we could technically cut both of them it's going to be quite interesting i think now we need to go from the other side so let's go from here like this press b just slide bevel to it and you know something like that we could even taper this inside like this and maybe move it a little bit up so you don't you know cross this, these um cross these bevels here and we can add some handle there we could even create another cut here on top i need to go from this side right something here like that you know just a slight indentation uh with some clip or whatnot we could also have some a lock mechanism in here so maybe we could cut it in this fashion something like this and just you know bevel this a little bit and maybe press t and just slice this i think it's a little bit too thick so i have a scroll and just go easy on the solidify and do something like that that's pretty cool and we could have some small locks here on the side so we could just run you know cuts here like this um from this side right something like that and maybe you know something in here maybe make a smaller cut it's a bit too deep maybe something like this it's gonna be interesting let me just uh, move it a little bit to the left so gy and move it to the middle here kind of like that it's cool and what else here on the top could have also some kind of uh, you know some kind of a lid or whatnot so x and slash it and then we could have some you know kind of notches in here so again we have to go from the other side because that's where the mirror is right we could go with a the theme here so oblong cuts in in this area and maybe kind of like a, a larger cut here in the middle um Maybe something different here. Maybe here on the top, we could have some kind of like a, you know, some kind of a panel axis on the top. Here on the side, we could have another element um, on this side here. So let me just create cuts here with a wedge cut like that. That's going to look pretty cool. Now I'm starting to look at the on the overall design, right? So you see, this is kind of uh, past the blockout stage, and we're starting to add uh, the secondary detail to this um, to this case, and this could take quite a long time. You could make this, um, you know, one sided or two sided. This back could be completely different. We could, for example, create, you know, maybe like some kind of um some sort of exhaust in here oh we have a cut from this side don't we so we have to move it to um on the y-axis hang on let me just try it from this side again so here and b and just you know move it in and maybe we can uh, create this kind of a taper and let me move this one down down or up like this that's actually pretty cool right and it doesn't have to be so deep so could be a little bit less deep maybe you no, know, maybe larger but less deep something like this here in the back yeah so you know this box is a different sort of uh, uh you know different features in the back and different features in the front um so it's not so boring right um here too we could have some cuts boom right and things started to look interesting and the same here on the side we could have some interesting stuff going on here so this could be actually exposed then we have some cuts here on the bottom and maybe maybe cut here as well like this 
And on this other side, we could have something different. Or actually, this could be symmetrical, you know, just for fun, right? So you see now, actually, I don't like how this is aligning here. So let me just have a scroll this. Remove that. And instead of mirroring this, um, I'm going to actually apply this. So I'm going to apply a mirror. So let's apply the mirror. And I'm going to cut this one on from this side. So something like that yep actually you know what i don't really like this cut i'm gonna make this much smaller like that i think that's gonna be better and then maybe i could mirror this back here maybe i could drop this a little bit so now you see now i'm kind of designing and sort of thinking um how to place these elements in a way to create some kind of a cool composition of details maybe this can get L shape here is kind of interesting and then you know we can go really microscopic on that so we can start adding more cuts uh, we could start adding you know um, some additional elements here once you decide on the overall uh, overall feel uh, we can start going really deep with some um, you know larger moves here now here on the side what i wouldn't mind is kind of like a vent here in the bottom do you know what i mean so i have to go from the other side so let's go here right and let's go in no oh, more time bevel is too big something like that yeah so we can create kind of like a vent system in here so I could just sharpen this, select this one, Control L, P, and Selection. And I could just, you know, create some interest here. Uh, maybe like this. So extrude it, and then press V and X for Array. And do something like this, right? And then uh, what I need to do is I need to add some support for this. So K with knife and slice it through. So it's going to support all these bullions and I could actually mirror this to the other side, make it, uh, you know, symmetrical. And you got this kind of indication of a cooler box or something, right? So if I scroll now, if you wanted to, for example, maybe even um, angle these like that, holding control uh, to kind of, you know, tilt them a little bit, I think it's going to be more interesting. So you cannot really see how deep they go. But let's just uh, maybe tighten the survey a little bit. Because I want to leave more room on the bottom, at the top. I don't want everything to be super symmetrical because you know asymmetry is what adds the flavor, right? So I think we're good. Let's just turn on cavity back. This looks really nice. Uh, we got some breakage here on this cut, but what we could do is uh, well, we didn't add supports here, which is actually my fault. And also we got some uh, splits here on the on this one so let's just move it up here to mitigate this damage uh, let me see that yeah just move it up and it should fix the problem of the shading over there and same here we probably have to just you know fix this you don't want to move these ones because these are supporting um they support the curvature of the bevel so you don't want to mess with these but we can mess with these, you see what I mean? So we could do something like this, for example, right? And leave the rest uh, as is. And kind of clean up these, right? So we'll move them up or down or, you know. In fact, uh, this will do. Cool. So there you go. Um, and that's our box. Now will be the stage where I would start moving from secondary detail to tertiary detail. So, you know, it's very difficult to kind of split the block out from secondary detail because secondary detail could be as big as you know kind of like a block out pieces because it really depends on what you're doing right so where is this cut here hang on i want to move it a little bit because it affects my bevel you see so i'm going to move it a little bit up here there we go that's better i could actually run some securing loops here so run one here and one more here secure this there you go um you know 
some secondary details like for example this one is quite large so you know it's almost as large as this cutout here so or this one for example right this could be secondary detail this could be just a block out stage so it really depends on uh you know what kind of details you're after but the tertiary detail like small smaller detail is gonna be the fillers and they also are kind of mixed with secondary details because I could still start adding some larger pieces here, like for example, the handle, right? So what I could do here is uh, from this side, I could um, grab this edge and split it and do something like that. So like these two and create a selection out of them, right? And then I'm gonna get this edge here. There we go. So here what we can do is press Alt D our D will allow you to extrude the edge without adding a face in the middle. It's a really cool shortcut. Not many people know it. And scale it in here, maybe a little bit like that. Uh, make this a little bit bigger. Uh, let me just move the origin to Geo. There we go. Scale it a bit like this. And, and just move it down a bit. There you go. And maybe scale it a bit more here. Okay, and we're going to curve this. Let me see this. There's something weird going on. We have a mirror mirroring itself. There we go. That's better. Um, and now I think we're ready to, to curve extract this. So, you know, mesh tools and curve extract. There we go. And I think that's enough. We could just move it a little bit here, to be honest. And maybe move these in here and then kind of extrude them like that um, now if you wanted to collapse this because you see we, we kind of messed up the curvature here if you want to collapse this back to an edge so press Q curve extract press X and then select this one and very uh, visual geometry to mesh and then you can fix this you see so what we can do is uh, collapse these uh, and then mirror to the other side right match these ones split these ones mirror and then mesh tools and curve extract so you can move back and forth if you want now we could go with this handle or we could go with something a bit more rectangular i think maybe rectangular is going to be better hmm. so instead of doing that kind of a curve extract what we can do is go to curve extract and scroll down to something like this which is pretty cool now uh, there we go and then control 2 Actually, we're gonna have to secure this first. So let me convert it to mesh and then, so also this one is not really, straight. There we go, that's better. This one is also messed up a little bit. So let's fix it, shall we? Fix it manually, it's okay. So now I'm gonna select all these here. And I'm gonna run the bevel, three segments like that, and simply run a subdivision on it. So I'm gonna, you know, come up with this kind of a shape, which is interesting. And I think it looks a bit more uh, aligned with the design of this box, to be honest, than just, you know, like a pipe. So that's pretty cool, right? And there you go. And then, you know, you, you, we can start adding stuff on top of it. So we could either do this with geometry or we could just start, you know, creating, start adding decals and, you know, whatnot. So like here, for example, we could, you know, start cutting this. Uh, let me just switch it to cutter to cutter from knife and start, you know, chopping this away. Uh, let me just uh, separate this to its own selection and then we can just, you know, start playing with this one only press w for wedge cut and do something like this how it looks yeah, not so good let's make it smaller yeah and not this kind of a wedge cut i was thinking about a different wedge cut there we go that's actually interesting and maybe one more in here something like this you know just tiny bits over that this will do here we could have we could recover the colors so 
shift to an alt h we could just use the cutters so what i could do here with this for example is make this smaller right and go to uh, settings and shift click on shade solid which will remove it from the cutter collection or duplicate it and instead of um, you know should actually move it to the normal collection so hang on let's just move it to collection and then you can see hide the cutters but you you can actually recover um you can you can convert the cutter into uh, into a mesh which is a very cool technique press p lower this profile here we need to change it to 0 0.5 i wish there was a reset button for that it would be quite convenient um let's do this and we could uh, we could actually run the boolean here you know remove this wedge cut and do something like that here press j shift click to live and move it to the middle make it a little bit wider all right and chamfer this like this here and maybe bevel this like this here and maybe even run the chamfer on this side like that okay and then operations multiply so we got this kind of a you know lock um, sort of a thing Let's just marry this to the side and then you can just keep adding to it you know like for instance we could just grab this face here in the bottom move it up a little bit and then alt r rotate it on on this axis with um, edge constraint like this holding control to create an interesting you know situation like that because every single planar shift in your model is going to create a visual interest here yeah? and it's going to catch light which is you know exactly what you want let's just add a weighted normal we already have a bevel here if not let's just add a bevel there we go and then we could have some additional stuff here like for example decals you know so yeah um they'll do here too you know we could have something you could actually use this uh sharp and this and use this one so we could insert that and shift curve extract outside like this sharpen this and uh, maybe you know create something here uh, something interesting out of this maybe like a like a you know kind of like um, like a push button then you push it and you sort of um, you know open this case or whatever right so you kind of uh, hold it with uh, with hands with your hands here and you push with a thumb here or something to maybe i don't know unlock this uh, case or do whatever so you know we're getting somewhere slowly here in the bottom too see like i'm jumping from place to place because what you need to pay attention to is the whole design okay the whole design needs to be cohesive that's really important uh, a common mistake of beginners is that when when you know people who are new to 3d or whatever when they design something they get so absorbed by one element or one area that you stop thinking on a larger scale of the entire work and you cannot get lost in these tiny details and you forget, you know, what you were supposed to be doing. This one also needs to be mirrored to the other side. There we go. So that, that's really crucial, yeah, um, to kind of remain, you know, consistent throughout the throughout the design here, yeah. Here too, we could have some additional cuts, in my opinion, maybe somewhere here in the top, or you could just use decals. You know, we could have some kind of like tiny, tiny cuts in here. I think it's going to look pretty cool sort of going to uh, it's maybe not so deep let me shift t and taper this it's gonna like that yes yeah, so he's gonna kind of correspond with these cuts here here in the bottom sort of frame this and then you got this beautiful empty space you know if you really wanted to you could for example add more stuff in here so let's say that we wanted to add um like vents here in the back right something like this shift t okay and then uh let me think actually maybe not as not as deep something like that and then inside here you know you could just 
or I'm a decal or or something else, you know, um, some kind of like a, a ventilation system or whatnot, right? Something like this, you know, like a cooler or whatever. Uh, I think it's gonna look pretty badass, right? Curve extractors, right? And then let's just nuke the bevel and mirror. And let me let me zero that on Z axis. So SZ zero. There you go. Let me move the origin to face. And let me rotate it and then apply rotation. And then we're going to uh, subdivide it. And one more time. Okay. And then we're going to curve this with hard ups. Uh, sorry, not curve it, twist it, uh, which is here. There we go. And apply. Actually, you know what we could do? We could scale this here. So press O for proportional editing S Z and scale it like that. Uh, there we go. And let's actually apply the all the modifiers. So apply this uh, twist, and then we're gonna add solidification. There you go, and then we're gonna apply a bevel. Okay, so we have a blade. I don't know if I'm not overthinking this, but you know, there you go. Let me just rotate this like that. There you go. Now we're gonna move a cursor here, shift S to, to face, so it's in the middle. And we're going to run um, an array. So, radial array with control, press X. And boom, you got yourself a fan here in the back, right? I'm just going to move it backwards. There you go. And mirror to the other side. And hide that. And you got a really cool element over there. And what we could do is, uh, you know, chamfer this. And kind of create a cool indentation here. I need to remove this proportional editing. So press O, then GX. There we go. That's better. That's what I wanted. That looks good. Here on the top, we could have some screens. So we could have additional, you know, we could have asymmetry in here, right? So we could do is uh, have, um, let me just, uh, hang on. Let me just uh, cut this here from the top, right? So we're going to add a screen here like this, right? Okay. Uh, we need to turn off the mirror. So let's apply the mirror. Pressions multiply. And then try this again, okay? So, screen here. Right? And this is way too thick. So, I have a scroll and uh, modifier, solidify. Okay, we can even um, detach this one. So, control LP selection. And we can change the bevel here to smaller bevel. Yeah, so it's going to be kind of more mechanical and thinner and here we could have a keyboard right or something so we could have another uh, cut here like this maybe you know for keyboard right or something uh, or some buttons even actually you know because some buttons like i don't know maybe here okay and then t for solidification and then V for array X to change the axes. And maybe maybe three of them. And do something like this. And there you go. And we could actually move them, you know, somewhere here. Like this, right? Here we're gonna have uh, other elements of interest, like maybe tiny bevels or something, you know, so it's slightly elevated here. And we could mirror it. Oh, we cannot mirror it now because of this, but yeah. Actually, no, we can mirror this because this one is a separate piece now, so we can mirror that. Um, so that's an advantage. I think our cavity is gone again. There we go. And you see it's coming together very nicely. Here too, this could be mirrored to the other side of the front. I think these tiny notches are fine um this could be slightly smaller 
let me just apply this cut operations multiply and then shift s to geometry there we go and then scale this a little bit let me just go to front view and scale it out on egg on y axis so it's going to be slightly smaller here in the front um kind of like inset it you know i think it's going to add a little bit more interest i could also make it a little bit more inset here on this side i think it's going to be kind of cool it's like a separate compartment or some kind of a battery you know whatnot here you have space for logo and uh you know we could have some asymmetrical design here as well and actually i want it to be here something here and then vx and i want two of them and then t that looks really cool you see the asymmetry just breaks this whole composition uh, into something really interesting um we got some pull here but that's from the edge connecting too sharply as you can see and simply messing around uh, with the bevel which we can fix very easily the same here you don't want these kind of sharp connections they're gonna fuck everything up we can create a nice chair for here and then you know create kind of like a deep inset and one more and then g g x and boom something like this you know looks really cool i think it's pretty badass and then you know the last stage would be to texture this and then on top of that add additional elements with decals right i can show you here very br briefly how i would do this right since we are you know going deeper here so let's just go to machine and now you know you you need to choose materials right so you need to think like you know what would fit in here i think that going maybe with plastic for the for the main case would be interesting so I would, let's say industrial plastic but slightly brighter so you know something like this right and this one could be actually made of metal machine steel maybe oh that's nice this one also could be machine steel this one this one this one and this one could be all machine steel to be honest um and the top could be some maybe you know what i'm thinking maybe this shiny plastic white one that's too bright isn't it let me see if i can make it darker Maybe like kind of grayish. Let me see that. Oh, it's not too bad actually. And this one could be this one could be metal actually, no. Or or it could be actually this one, the top, and this one could be made of metal, right? So, here, control LP, and the same with this one. And this one needs to be uh, much screen, but not as, not as dark just dark enough and this could be metal so that looks pretty cool um you know then we could just start adding some uh, details in here like this could be this metallic thing um this th these two on the front could be made of this metal as well so you could just you know select them both Control lp and simply you know texture them separately right I think it's gonna look a little better and now it's time to add some more stuff though it's nice and now would be time to add these really tiny kind of like finishing touches also i can see that we got some problem here with shading so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with uh unwrapping select everything you and smart uv project there we go and then change the scale to maybe three and this should solve the problem there we go that was kind of weird but you know it's sorted this mod is a bit reflective we, we could make it a bit less uh, less reflective 
make it more rough there we go that's better and here too we need to simply um, smart tv projectors and we're good to go now be time to add some some decals right so you know you could just start adding stuff to to this uh, case let's say uh we could just look for some let's just go with this for example could make it large or small i think small is gonna be better and now we could actually drop it in here and make it darker so in blender 4.0 in order to change color you need to go here and disconnect and then you can change the color to something else like this for example that looks good modeling maybe brighter is gonna be better maybe this is cool right and then you know we can add some tiny stuff like i don't know some screws or whatnot right so you could just add tiny details you know like this to this case maybe you know screw here and and uh and the screw somewhere here okay and make them smaller so individual origins make them smaller d and project and the other problem is that at the moment Deco machine doesn't support other must than bsdf so we need to do it manually um, to kind of match the the mods you will need to create a cube or some kind of element here with a bsdf mod like a darker one that more or less uh, matches the color of this and then it's called material right so watch now i can just grab that d and d and hold shift and match it to c material and then you're gonna be able to match these uh, a little bit better right like that so that's the only way to do it right now so let's just remove this one and move it here and then simply mirror to both sides right now this could be a little bit higher to be honest or what we could do is just nuke this screw here so um, apply the mirror and simply nuke this one so we have only three screws which adds a little bit more elements of you know of asymmetry right move this in here and move these here so it's a bit more on the edge there we go and this one is fine here too you could just keep stuck in you know and just keep going and adding stuff like here for example you could add um, some screen you could use our decals from the uh, trim sheet and decal pack it's available on our site we have tons of them so you could use them you could just snap this here we don't need this anymore because we have it in the scene here too we could have some elements additional elements you know maybe uh maybe some clamps or not like this you know small ones right so we could have one here actually you know what not clamps i have a better idea some kind of a vent um like this one for example right this will be interesting horizontally here. Maybe here like this and just project it and mirror to the other side and then we need to again match it. So D shift and boom right and there you go. And that looks pretty cool. And then we can mirror to the other side. And there you go. Here too. We could have maybe the same as this, just smaller, or maybe you could have something else, like some kind of a warning or some kind of a, you know, this kind of a label somewhere here. 
project it and then let's disconnect it and make it make it darker right here i think blank is fine so there you go you know this this is how you slowly build your design from just a block out through detail stage you know secondary tertiary detail and then you can just keep keep adding stuff on, on, until you reach a point where you know adding more stuff is gonna make it just too busy or too complicated like for instance i wouldn't add anything in here there's already a lot of detail on this uh, on this crate here so i wouldn't touch this here on the side what we could do is add like two massive cuts or maybe even let me see something like this yeah you know this could work right but really not much much more than this uh, because you do need some empty space uh, to uh, you know for your model to to rest and actually we cannot copy that we need to copy the counter otherwise it's gonna be a disaster this could be even too uh, too deep it doesn't have to be so deep give me a bit more shallow like this so just a bit of an element here you know on the side that creates a bit more you know c catches light and creates a bit more interest right but there you go right something maybe on the bottom here some kind of uh you know two tiny elements or one they make a long decal right so we could slap for example we could slap something like this right where is it there we go so grab that and let's just make it smaller and then scale it and drop it somewhere here right and then just simply project it and then we're gonna match this so the and match it to the environment boom right and you got this kind of an element here in the bottom so additional interest kind of a cut with a little bit of a detail and uh you know bob jonko so uh, it kind of creates a bit, bit of a better base for this model sort of framing everything with these two so we got two really deep cuts with deep shadows two in here one in the bottom so gonna frames this whole thing around which i think looks pretty cool and there you go and here you know too we could have some kind of like a another sticker with some kind of you know information like that you know high pressure whatnot you could even stick it in here boom right and um this color is fine so it doesn't really poke you in the eyes but kind of offsets you know kind of breaks the symmetry in addition to these two and so there you go maybe something on these um on these you know so something that indicates you can press them um so maybe maybe something like that right you know just uh boom yeah and then we're going to match it a little bit better there we go i make it darker and then you know now round maybe not the best idea because it's gonna kind of clash with this screw in here but technically what we could do you know is nuke this screw yeah and do this right so you know what i mean so if something doesn't fit just remove it right because you're still designing so like i said you, you need to look at the whole picture not just uh you know one area right because it, it, the whole thing needs to be cohesive uh, and sort of make sense, right? And there you go. These buttons actually, I think, could be dark, to be honest. I mean, we could try. Maybe it's going to be a bit better. I don't know. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. Stands out. And there you go. And we could have some kind of a tiny screws in here, like one, two, three, four, but we're going to be adding them. So anyway, this is just basically a process of creating a model in, in 3D. You know, you start with something very, very, very basic. Then you just kind of look for uh, larger changes in terms of like really large secondary details. And then you kind of slowly uh, progress to, you know, to smaller secondary details and then tertiary details. And when I'm adding decals, you know, usually you're going to be working with mats. So you want to have mats established. And again, mats will also add details in a way because they're going to add contrast in areas when you want contrast. Like, for example, you know, 
uh, these are of a different color than this and same with this one so you kind of pulls your eyes there right so you need to think uh, how you want to design your model what, what kind of contrast you want between the colors for how reflective you want them to be it's so important and then at the end you're going to be adding lighting and lighting also has an impact on the the you know how your model going to look because this lighting is very flat but if i for example go with different type of lighting so let me just um uh, you see this lighting is very very different right so let me just turn it around here okay now you see what i mean that's a very very different lighting it's a bit more aggressive right so uh you see like the reflectivity of my mat's going to be very important here depending on type of light an angle of light everything see how everything changes depending on how i'm going to angle my light so you also need to think about that because the render, the lighting you choose for your render is going to accentuate some details or maybe make some details less vis visible, okay? So you need to also think about lighting as well. Then the angle of the camera and everything also is important, right? Anyway, guys, uh, that's it for this one. Hope it helps you out. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next one. Like I said, if you're a beginner in Blender, I would highly recommend you grab our course Jumpstart Hard Service in Blender. It's going to teach you all the basics, everything you need to know to get started with Blender in just a few hours. The link is in the video description and the course is free. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.